What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Waking You. Now, while all body types are unique and beautiful, have you ever wondered why people store fat in certain areas of their body? Like some men or women, they have a tendency to gain weight around the midsection, others around their hips, thighs. We all have our problem areas and weight loss issues and they're basically based on our body type. There are endless foods and diet plans that you can choose from, but there are of no use unless you find the one that fits your body type specifically. Once you know your body type, you can define what your nutritional goals are and change your caloric intake accordingly. Eating according to your body type can help you lose weight more easily and keep a healthy body image. The following are some very useful diet and nutrition related tips that if you include to your daily eating routine, can have an outstanding effect on your body. In this episode, we have Chef Jude of the Six Pack Chef Kitchen to give us tips on how to create a healthy and nutritious meal plan that will fit your lifestyle. Hello Waking Nation, I'm Chef Jude and welcome to the Six Pack Chef Kitchen. In the last video, you watched how to design and create your workout plan. But in this video, I'll show you how to design and create your nutrition plan. If you're ready, let's get started. Before we begin, I just want to introduce myself even more to you guys. So I'm the owner and the manager of the Six Pack Chef. We are the ultimate diet delivery service in Metro Manila. We specialize in providing you scientifically designed, precisely calculated, and professionally prepared gourmet diet meals that's delivered right at your doorstep. So let's begin. Let's talk about how to design your nutrition plan and how to create and structure your nutrition plan. We all know that working out is very, very important. And in the last video, you saw how to structure your workout, workout plan. But this time, we want to talk about how to make a nutrition plan that will fit your goals, fit your food preferences, and fit your lifestyle. So let's now talk about how to structure your diet plan or your nutrition plan based on your goals. All right? Before you start about thinking what you want, let's first start about where you're coming from. So now you know about your different body types and your mesomorph, your ectomorph, and your or your if you're endomorph. But now you have to also understand that dieting is not only about body types, but also about adherence. Because regardless of the diet type that you will be in, even if it's the most effective diet that will get you to your goals from one day from, from day one to day 10 and then you'll be shredded as hell, it's not gonna happen if you're not gonna be able to stick to it. So it's important to know that when designing a diet plan, you focus on one thing, adherence. And based on that, that's when you decide which diet type based on your lifestyle goals and your specific goals, whether you're competing, whether you're doing bodybuilding, whether you're doing a marathon, you have to focus on adherence. So what is adherence? Adherence means basically if you're able to adhere to something. Adhere is if you can stick to it. So think of it this way. Um, kaya ko ba siyang stick na diet for the next six months, 12 months, or five years. That's what you think about when thinking about adherence. How long you can stick with the diet. Kasi, think about it. Useless kasi pag, let's say, magko-compete ka ng ano, December. Or let's say, today January and you want to get summer body shredded. And then you want to be able to get shredded by April, which is around four months. And then you can only stick to a diet for two months. So it's important na you are able to adhere to it for the next four months. But better yet, may, you are able to adhere to it for your entire life. Kaya tinatawag natin, hindi lang siya diet, pero lifestyle. So now, now that you know that you have to adhere to a diet, paano mo malaman kung which diet na naman ang pipiliin mo? Based on what? Your body type, and then also your food preferences. Bakit natin kung consider yung food preferences? What is food preferences? Food preferences is basically, ano yung mga gusto mo? So you have to consider that when creating a diet plan. There are a lot of diet types kasi. You talk about a low-carb diet, meron, di meron yan. You talk about a low-fat diet, you talk about a high-carb diet, or even a vegetarian, pescatarian, kung ano-anong diet yan. So importante, you are not just 
designing yung which diet, pero ano yung diet na gusto mo. Para, one, going back to the first point, you're able to adhere to it. So, now we pick a diet based on your lifestyle and based on your food preferences. So, you have to understand kung ano yung mga gusto mo. But also, considering kung ano yung pupuntahan mo. Imposible naman na sabihin mo, I like fast food, so ang the diet ko is fast food, pero yung goal mo is to become Jeremy Buendia, that's useless. So, that's what you have to consider is you have to create a diet plan based on your food preferences and your lifestyle. So, if you like, for example, ganito lang yan. For example, if you like carbs, you're not going to be a successful diet, uh, you're not going to succeed in your diet when you're gonna do a low carb or a very low carb diet. Kasi most likely, pag makakita ka ng rice or sweet potato or whatever, hahanapin mo talaga yan, di ba? So it's not a good thing na pipiliin mo yung very low carb diet. Maybe a relatively lower carb diet compared to a regular Filipino diet, but not really a very low carb diet. Kasi you like carbs. So you have to you have to consider yung mga food preferences mo as well. So again, going back, adherence, and then going to the second point, your food preferences or what you like or what you enjoy. You have to think about that and include it in your diet plan. So now, alam mo na kung ano yung mga gusto mo, ayaw mo yung, yung mga ayaw mo. So now, let's talk about how to maximize your diet naman. Kasi, regardless if you already can adhere to a diet and then choose a diet na you enjoy, you have to be realistic in terms na there are specific mga things that you have to follow in order to maximize your diet to reach your goals. So, to just break it down simply for you, let's first talk about three things in maximizing your diet. One, you have to un understand energy balance. So what is energy balance? This is basically calories. No, What is calories? Mga tan maraming nagsasabi tungkol calories there, calories this, calories that, pero you don't really understand what calories is. Calories basically, ano lang yun, simple lang yun. That's basically the unit of energy. Yun lang yun. Calories is the unit of energy. It means for this certain amount of calories, ito yung mapoprovide niya na energy sa katawan mo. Now that you understand calories, you have to understand energy balance. Basically, yung energy balance is, if you eat too much, kung kumakain ka, kahit gaano ka-healthy yan, pero sobra sa kailangan mo, you will gain weight. Pero naman, if you eat just enough, just enough lang sa activities mo, sa lifestyle mo, you will maintain your weight. Now, if you maintain your weight, and then you plan to lose weight, you basically just have to lower your food intake Para, and, and increase your your activities, your exercises. That's why we design your workout plan para ma-increase yung activities mo, yung, workout, yung workouts mo, yung, yung caloric expenditure mo. But important that you also have to achieve yung calorie down or lowering your calories through food. It doesn't mean na bababaan mo yung sobra yung calories kasi iniisip kasi ng mga tao. When you talk about calories or when you talk about lowering your calories, people think automatically, I'm gonna eat 1,200 calories or I'm gonna eat 500 calories. No, we're not talking about that. We're just basically talking about lowering your calories based on the current calorie level. Mo. So let's say most bodybuilders, for example, eat at a 3,000 calorie range. When they start to diet, they might go down first to 2,800, 2,700 calories, but basically, they're lowering their caloric intake. But at the same time, ini increase nila yung caloric level nila. So, from there pa lang, yung, yung calories na um, ginagamit ng body natin, na hindi na co-compensate sa food, bine-burn natin through the fat. So, that's why how that's how we burn fat. Okay? So, we burn fat when basically, yung calories na kailangan ng body, hindi na nakukuha through food, we get it from our fat. Because fat is basically just stored energy or stored calories. So when we're not eating anymore enough for our activity levels, our body will just go to the fat, get that as the source of calories. Kaya may fat loss. Now that you know what calories are, you have to understand na yung calories natin or yung energy balance natin or yung calories nga natin is not coming from all the same sources. Diba? So, calories is just the unit of energy. Pero, these come from different nutrient sources. So, we have three main macronutrients. Or your macronutrients meaning nutrients that you need in bulk. We talk about your carbs, we talk about your fat, and we talk about your protein. Now, out of these three, there's a very important thing that a lot of us in fitness talk about, which is protein. So, how do we maximize your protein intake? People say na kailangan mo ng 1 gram per pound of body weight, 
one gram per ano body. Daming ano ideas yan kung ilang grams per pound of body weight. But based on scientific data, what you need is actually at least or to maximize your diet between 1.6 grams to 1.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. So if you're like 100 kilos, for example, you just actually roughly need around 160 grams to 180 grams of protein. Now I'm not saying na yun lang kailangan mo, kasi there are other people who may need higher. There may there are other people who may need lower. So important din dito that we have to you know do a trial and error based on magtry mo na tayo ng this range. Pag we feel like oh we can take in more and our body responds to a higher range, then we increase. Pero if we feel like bloated ako masyado, hindi na ako naka, nakaka use ng toilet ng maayos or whatever, then you may adjust to a lower range. So this is just a range that you can do. So again, a good range to start with is 1.6 grams to 1.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. So what do I, what am I talking about pag grams yung pinag-uusapan natin? Baka iniisip nyo yung timbang mismo. No, I'm not talking about yung timbang ng food when I talk about grams. I'm talking about the, the specific nutrient count in grams. Okay, for example, uh, one scoop of whey protein is around 25 grams protein. So if you need around 180 grams of protein, for example, tapos you drink one scoop of protein per day, 180 minus 25, ilan ba yan? Hindi ako ganun kagaling sa math. Mga 155 grams of protein na lang yung kailangan mo for the day. So that's just an example of how to comply with your protein intake. For another example, 100 grams of chicken breast. 100 grams of chicken breast na raw ha, yung hindi paluto, is around 23 grams protein. So, these are some different ideas of how to comply your protein in your diet. So, if for example, you drink one scoop of protein, 25 grams, tapos you eat 100 grams of chicken breast na raw, tapos lutuin mo na lang yung raw, huwag mong kainin yung, yung chicken na raw ha, kasi delikado yan. Pero, um, you know, you get what I'm talking about. You already at least ate 48 grams of protein for the day. So, you just basically subtract na lang din from... 180 grams, you subtract your protein intake na 25 grams from whey protein and then another 23 grams for 100 grams of chicken breast. So now you've already subtracted 48 grams of protein. So those are just examples of how to comply with your protein intake. Now that we've talked about protein, now let's talk about the two other macronutrients, which is fat and carbs. Before we talk about carbs, let's talk about fat. What is fat? Baka iniisip mo, ang fat is yung pork chop, yung lempo, or whatever. No, fat is actually a macronutrient that's needed by our body. So when I say have fat, it's not necessarily have pork, lempo, or whatever different kinds of fat na nakikita mo, sisig, or whatever. We're talking about healthy fats. Okay? And this fat is actually a regulator of hormones. Yun yung function niya. Yung testosterone mo, fat ang dahilan yan. Yung other functions ng body mo, fat ang dahilan yan. It also absorbs, helps you absorb vitamins and minerals. So that's the function of fat. When you have or decide in your diet based on your uh, macronutrients, if you're going to go on a low-fat diet, make sure to have at least 25% or 20 to 25% of fat from your calories. So, when you say low-fat diet, it's not totally zero na yung fat, ha? Kasi, mang mangyayari niyan, you will get depressed, magpaproblema yung mga hormones mo, hindi ka makapag-absorb ng proper vitamins and minerals. So, at least have 20 to 25% of fat intake of your overall total calories. So, for example, 2,000 calories yung kailangan mo. You must get around 25% of 2,000 calories as a fat source. Okay? Now, I'm not talking about now you can eat sisig, you can eat whatever you want, liempo or whatever. Though I have a pork sisig recipe that you can check out, medyo healthy yun na pork sisig. But if you're gonna talk about yung mga fat mismo na nakakataba or um, different like the fat of the pork, we're not talking about that. You have to have healthy fat source pa rin. So what are healthy fat source? You're talking about good oils like olive oil, um, another avocado oil or avocados mismo are good sources of fat or fats from um, good meat sources na medyo lean na meat sources or fats from fish like fish oil for example is a fat source. So now you know how to structure your protein intake, now you know how to structure your fat intake. Now let's talk about how to structure your carb intake. As you all know ngayon medyo takot yung mga tao sa carbs, di ba? When you think about carbs, uh, magda when you think about dieting, you're thinking about dapat walang carbs, dapat zero carbs, dapat wala ka ng rice kakainin, dapat ano na lang, gulay na lang. But the truth is, carbs is not bad for you. Overconsumption of carbs is bad for you. In fact, yung basic function ng carbs for you is to provide you vitamins and minerals. All vegetable sources are actually carbs and they are full of vitamins and minerals. So they're actually good for you. 
Carbs is also a source of very good source of energy. Kaya napapansin nyo, if you have a carb up or a carb load, tapos mag-workout kayo, full of energy kayo, pump na pump kayo, that's a function of carbs. So, don't eliminate carbs entirely sa diet mo. First, find out kung ano yung what works for you. I'm not saying na have a lot of carbs kasi carbs then can cause bloating or problems if you have too much. But you have to consider also if it works for you or not. So adjust based on what works for you. So the question now is how much carbs can you eat? Now depending on how you structured your fat intake and how you structured your protein intake, based on the remaining calories, you can actually fill it up with carbs. So for example, 2,000 calories ka, di ba? And then we calculated, you need around 160 to 180 grams of protein, for example. You multiply that by 4, or I'm not gonna do so much math, but basically, you subtract your protein intake, you subtract your fat intake from your all your calories, and the remaining of that can be your carbs. But before we end talking about how to maximize yung protein, fat, and carbs, we also have to consider another source of nutrients, which is yung micronutrients. So kung may macronutrients tayo, may mac micronutrients tayo. What is micronutrients? Basically, this is your vitamins and minerals. Sometimes kasi, people get focused, too focused on sa macronutrients, kung ilang protein kakainin nila, gaano ka ka dami yung fat yung kainin nila, or gaano, gaano ka dami yung carbs na kainin nila, that they forgot, they, that they forget, meron pa tayong tinatawag na micronutrients. So what are your micronutrients? This is basically yung vitamins and minerals. So your vitamin A, E, vitamin C, your vitamin D, tapos yung mga minerals mo. Another thing that you also have to consider na nakaka-affect sa health is sodium. Okay? So, sodium is actually needed by the body. So, when you say on a lower sodium diet, you're not saying specifically na wawalain mo yan. Because everything meron yung sodium. Even yung mga raw meats, yung raw chicken breast, may sodium yan. Yung raw pork, may sodium yan. So, you're not saying na nawawala yung sodium entirely. Pero you have to also watch out na hindi nagsaspike yung sodium. So, for example, there are a lot of mga food na sobrang dami ng soy sauce, for example, or salt. Um, this spikes your sodium intake. But other than that, there are also supplements na binabantayan ninyo or bantayan ninyo. Kasi minsan, ang supplements, mataas din yung sodium. Sobrang ganda ng macronutrient profile niya. Maganda at taas ng protein, baba ng fat and carbs or whatever. Tapos, pero pagtingin mo sa sodium, sobrang spike naman. So, what happens to other people? They hold a lot of water because sodium, sodium also tends to help you hold on to water. Especially, especially if hindi consistent yung sodium intake mo. Now, I'm not saying you take out your sodium entirely, but you at least watch out your sodium level. So if you're the kind of person na um, basically very healthy yung diet or very healthy yung lifestyle, tapos medyo clean yung eating nyo, hindi masyado yung so daming sodium, then you must watch out for those um, supplements or even food na mataas sa sodium. So before we begin talking about your specific body type or how to structure your diet based on your body type, let's first summarize kung ano yung pinag-usapan natin para hindi makalimutan. So first, you have to structure your diet based on one, your adherence. So how long you can stick to the diet or if you can stick to the diet. Pangalawa, you have to consider your preferences or the things that you enjoy and your lifestyle. So dapat included pa rin yun minsan sa diet mo kasi how can you stick to it if you don't enjoy it, di ba? Third is how to maximize naman. So you have to know how much protein you can eat, how much fat, your carbs, and your total calories. Kasi if you don't watch your total calories, kahit, kahit gaano pa ka-healthy yan, if your intake of calories is so high, you're gonna gain weight. And kahit, kahit gaano ka-healthy yan, if your intake of calories are too low, you're gonna lose weight, you're gonna lose muscle. So it's important that you really watch also your calories. And then at the same time, yung micronutrients mo naman. Hindi nagsaspike yung sodium mo kasi baka you'll hold water. Or you're getting enough vitamins and minerals making sure na um, varied yung food items mo. Okay? So now, let's go to our body types or how to structure a diet based on our body type. Now you understand there is three body types. May mga gifted, ang tinatawag natin ectomorph. Kahit gaano ka, kain, gaano ka dami yung kainin, they're not easily gaining weight, right? We have your mesomorph. These are the more athletic guys, even the more gifted guys, na parang konting workout lang, gaganda yung katawan. Kahit hindi structure yung maayos yung diet, gumaganda pa rin yung katawan. Okay? So these are more forgiving na diet, uh, na body. So, and then we have our last which is our mesomor uh, our endomorphs. So these are the guys who easily gain muscle but at the same time easily gain fat. All right? Now how do you structure 
your body or your diet based on these body types. You have to understand that yung mga different pro um, going back to the maximizing your macronutrients, one, you have to maximize all, for all these body types, you have to maximize your protein intake. So make sure that you're getting at least what I mentioned, 1.68 to 1.6 uh, to 1.8 grams per kilogram of body weight, and then adjust from there. And then manipulating based on the other micro, uh, macronutrients, which is your carbs and your fat. So for example, yung mga ectomorphs, they're more forgiving on the carbs. They actually need carbs. They can metabolize carbs really, really well. So mga ectomorphs, yung mga sobrang skinny, if you, if you see them, kahit sobrang daming kainin ng carbs nila, they don't easily gain weight or they don't easily bloat. So this actually, Okay, you can actually increase your carbs. Ang importante lang sa mga ectomorphs is you watch your calories. Kasi when you're an ectomorph, most of the time you're actually also under eating. Napapansin mo yan, yung mga ectomorphs, they're not the kinds of people who eat enough. So they tell you, ah, Chef Jude, dahil to yan kasi ectomorph ako, I'm not gaining weight. Pero ang dami kong kinakain. Have you tried tracking specifically kung ilang calories, protein, carbs, and fat yung kinakain mo? The question or the answer, I'm sure, is no. So when you're an ectomorph, you're basically eating based on how you feel. Feeling mo, dami yung kinain mo kasi sobrang busog ka. But in reality, when you calculate down to the calories, protein, carbs, and fat, you're actually not eating enough. So it's important for ectomorphs to be very, very mindful of how much you're eating. At least, it's important that you increase your caloric intake and maintain and stay consistent with your caloric intake. Hindi yung marami yung kakainin mo for today, bukas, konti, kasi busog ka pa, and then the next day, marami naman. No, dapat in the entire day, in the entire week, consistent ka sa calorie intake mo. Usually, it's not even how much carbs you're gonna eat, how much fat you're gonna eat, how much protein you're gonna eat. It's most of the time, your calorie level. If you're able to watch that, kung gaano ka dami yung kinakain mo, consistent ka dun, you're most likely not gonna stay an ectomorph. You're gonna start gaining muscle, especially if you work out um, sinasabay mo yung workout sa nutrition plan mo. Ngayon, let's talk about the mesomorph. When you talk about the mesomorph, ito yung iniisip ko sila yung gifted individuals. They have a very good metabolism. Basically, ito yung mga athletic nung bata pa, tapos when you see them grow old, baganda pa rin yung katawan. These are usually your mesomorphs. Or they have good metabolism, they maintain enough lean muscle mass, and they don't easily gain fat, they don't also easily lose fat. So, Basically, pag sa mesomorphs, my diet, my diet tip is stay consistent pa rin kasi, you know, you never know. If you're not consistent, especially with your workout, your diet, you're most likely gonna end up losing weight or gaining fat. Okay, so make sure that you still stay consistent. But at least it's much more forgiving for them. So my advice for this um, body type is you still stay consistent in tracking your protein, your carbs, and your fat. And you take advantage of that kasi... Maganda na yung baseline or yung body base mo eh. And then take advantage of that. Maganda yung metabolism mo. Focus on your workout. Maganda yung, yung diet mo. Then your body will respond even better. So if you're a mesomorph, good job. And just make sure that you stay consistent with your diet so that you maximize on those results. Now let's talk about endomorphs. Endomorphs, these are the guys who are a little bit gifted, I would say. <laughs> Kasi... Ang nangyayari nito, these are guys who easily gain muscle. But the problem is, these are guys who easily gain body fat as well. So I would consider these guys having a slower metabolism. And this is where knowing the amount of calories, knowing the amount of your macronutrients is very important. Just like the ectomorph, pero the ectomorph, you're trying to increase. Kasi mataas yung metabolism ng ectomorph. Okay? With the meso, uh, sorry, endomorph, you're talking about a slower metabolism, so you have to match yung calorie level mo, okay? So, it's good that you easily gain muscle, but you also easily gain body fat. So, you have to watch out your total calories that you don't go over and beyond what you need for the day unless you want to gain weight, for example. But most of the time, endomorphs, they want to lose weight. So, make sure you're watching your total calorie intake. Now, I'm not saying magka-crash diet ka, like, like I said a while ago, from 3,000 calories, you're gonna drop to 1,200 calories. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that you just watch your total calorie level and make sure that your activity levels actually match this. For example, 3,000 calories level is your base calories and that's where you stay uh, on maintenance. You first drop to 2,900 calories as you adjust, 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 
drop again to 2,800 calories, adjust, 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 and then drop again to 2,700 calories, and before you know it, you're shredded, okay? And a good thing about this is you can easily gain muscle eventually as you slowly go back to your diet since you have a slower metabolism but a very good response to building muscle. So there you go, those are the diet tips that you can apply right away. You don't even have to start thinking about, oh, dapat uh, expensive or sobrang healthy yung diet mo. Start slow, but make sure that you're consistent and you progress accordingly. If you have any questions, make sure to comment them down below so Waking You can answer you. Or if you have any questions for me, you can follow me on my Instagram channel at Cook with Jude or check out my YouTube video for recipe videos with macronutrients and the calories for each recipe. And you can actually create a recipe with me in those videos. If you don't have time, the Six Pack Chef has always got your back. We can prepare all these precisely calculated meals for you and for your fitness goals. Thank you for joining me on this episode. I look forward to seeing you next time. And that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. But before you go, if you have suggestions or food recipes that you can recommend, please don't hesitate to include them in the comment section down below. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please hit that like and subscribe button and make sure to turn on the notification so you never miss the videos that we do. And we'll see you on our next video.